speaking about it. Thank you both. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Senator Ossoff. Senator Blackburn. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. Judge Lee, I want to come to you. Have you ever been to seminary? Do you have any theological degrees? Um, thank you, Senator Blackburn. I do not have any theological degrees. Okay. Um, I have take right. in, yes, I, I've done some reading on it, thank you. Well, returning to the Cassell case and the way you treated essential entities separate and different from religious entities, as you can see, there are three of us that have asked you about this, and it is an issue of importance because of the inconsistency that you brought to bear in that decision and, um, it looks as if this order facially violated Smith's requirement of neutrality, and I, I'm concerned about that. I'm also concerned, and this line really concerns me in your, in your opinion, and I'm quoting you, until testing data signals that it is safe to engage more fully in exercising your spiritual beliefs, whatever they may be, plaintiffs as Christians can take comfort in the promise of Matthew 18, 20. For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with you. Now you put that in there. So do you believe that government has the authority to tell religious observers what their faith requires of them? Thank you, Senator Blackburn. Um, I do not believe that the government is authorized to direct how groups of faith should define their particular Do you believe beliefs. that government could tell Christians, we've just come through Lent, do you think they could tell them 30 days is enough for Lent? Or tell those of the Muslim faith that for daily calls to prayer, that that is enough, that there, that government has the ability to restrict that community of fellowship? I don't believe that the government has the authority to tell faith groups what to believe, Senator Blackburn. I do think that your decision shows a misunderstanding of the Supreme Court's clear precedent on the First Amendment free exercise clause. Um, and elsewhere in that same decision, you wrote that, and I'm quoting you again, the traditional tiers of constitu constitutional scrutiny do not apply, end quote, during an epidemic. So whose job is it to decide when a pandemic or an epidemic begins and when it ends. Is it the court? Is it Congress? Is it unelected bureaucrats? Who is going to decide that? Because in your opinion, you appear that you had decided. Thank you, Senator Blackburn, for that question and allowing me to explain. Um, when I approached Castle and issued that decision, I was duty bound by oath to follow Supreme Court and Seventh Circuit precedent. Um, Jacobson was a Supreme Court case um, and Jacobson was actually a, just prior to my ruling. I'm going to cut you off at that because it is clear. You looked at secular entities in one way and religious entities in another, and I have a problem with that. Judge Mendoza, I want to come uh, with you. 96, you were in law school, and you wrote a comment entitled, When Maria Speaks Spanish, Hernandez, the Ninth Circuit, and the Fallacy of Race Neutrality, which criticized the Supreme Court's decision in Hernandez versus New York, which was a 1991 decision. In that comment, you wrote, attorneys and judges are not shielded from the prejudices that surround them. In fact, they are too affected by the social norms that often drive our conscience and unconscious decisions. So what kind of prejudices affect you and how do they drive your decisions as a federal judge? Uh, thank you, Senator, for that question. As you noted, uh, that uh, comment was 26 years ago yeah. uh, before I was a lawyer uh, and I had taken an oath and before I was a judge. Uh, and 
Uh, I think that we all, in general, have preferences. Uh, and what I do as a judge is make sure that I make the decisions, not on any preference, but on the facts that, is be that are before me and on the law, including the precedent both by the Ninth Circuit and the Supreme Court. That's, and I issue an order, Senator, that makes clear what my ruling is, but what my thinking was, how exactly I reached that decision. And I try to do that in every uh, single case. Well, I'm, I'm out of time, but I will come to you for a written explanation because there was another co comment you had in there about you thought Hernandez was wrongly decided because it failed to take into account the effects of racism in our justice system, the anti-immigrant hysteria gripping the country and the practical effect on Latinos, and that the court created a legal fiction that severely restricts Latino participation in the jury selection process. So I will come to you for a written explanation there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Blackburn. Senator Tillis. 